Welcome to the Weekday Report for Friday, November 1st. I'm Joe Potente. Here's a brief look at the news. Rather than continue the infighting between Kenosha and Milwaukee, the matter of a Kenosha casino should be a question of Wisconsin versus Illinois gaining jobs and revenue. That was the message of a group of local business and political leaders who held a news conference in the Capitol on Thursday. Mayor Keith Bosman and others called on Governor Scott Walker to approve the Menominee Nation's Hard Rock Kenosha project. Walker, meanwhile, issued another of his daily statements on his decision process, reaffirming his need for consensus among the state's 11 tribes. He said the two holdouts, the Forest County Potawatomi and Ho-Chunk tribes, remain far from an agreement with the Menominee. Trick-or-treating after dark on Halloween for the first time in more than 20 years in Kenosha had mixed reviews on its rainy debut Thursday night. While kids seemed to embrace the change, some adults complained about being out on a school night. A couple in the Whitecaps neighborhood posted a sign on their front stoop saying that due to the change they could no longer participate. They said because of their work schedules, they would no longer be home to hand out candy. Brompton school teacher Elizabeth Williams brought a spooky Halloween theme to science Thursday. Williams' seventh grade students came to class to find what she called a spooky cauldron of misty green stuff. It was actually dry ice mixed with dish soap, a vivid demonstration of the properties of gas. A new sign urging against cell phone use by drivers debuted at Nash Elementary School Thursday afternoon. The signs, which will be posted outside of schools across Kenosha, are the result of a recent city council resolution sponsored by Alderman David Bogdala. Gary Kunich, whose 21-year-old son Devin was killed in an August 2011 crash, appeared at the unveiling ceremony with his wife Ruth. The driver who struck their son had received a cell phone call seconds before the crash. This week's Fix-It feature covers a fire hydrant that was all wet. Here's Bill Guido with the story. I'm Bill Guida, I'm here for the Kenosha News Fix-It. And as fix-its go, this particular one isn't much of a problem. In fact, it may not any longer be a problem. As it happens, this fire hydrant over my shoulder had a leak. And fix-it took a call on the leak, came out to check it out. And while I was out here, a Kenosha water utility worker just by chance happened to pull up in his pickup truck because he was here to check out the same leak. And while Fix-It was still here, he basically fixed the leak, or so it appears. So, we will see in a few days whether it leaks again. If it does, they will disassemble the hydrant and put a new gasket in and then replace the hydrant. As it stands, the hydrant is usable by firefighters and is not a problem for firefighting. This is Bill Guida for Kenosha News. Fix it. Thanks, Bill. What's trending today? What's your review of night trick-or-treating? Tell us on our Facebook page. Up next is Terry Flores with Voices on the Street. This week, Voices on the Street is outside the Hedberg Library at Carthage College, where we ask students what they absolutely had to have when they leave the house. Here's what they had to say. Well, for me, there are three things. There's my cell phone, my keys, and my wallet. I need all those things. <laughs> well, my keys get in my car, my cell phone to make sure I can contact anyone who needs me, and my wallet carries my ID in it. <laughs> I have to have my phone, my keys, and a bottle of water. My phone, my wallet, and my keys. When I wake up late and got to run to class, the first thing I grab is a sweatshirt because Lake Michigan is cold. The second thing I'll grab is my cell phone because it's, it's my sidekick. It's, it's in my hands all the time. The third thing are my glasses so I can see. And those are the three things that I'll grab. Thanks, Terry. Now here's a look at what we're working on today. Daylight saving time ends Saturday night. John Kanovich will have a look at some things that you should do as you set your clocks back. And Jesse Tuttle has a profile of the Kenosha History Center's new director. Pick up a copy of the Kenosha News and check kenoshanews.com for all the details on these stories and more. 
I'm Joe Potente with the Weekday Report.